For the last four days, I've been camping in the jungles of Yucatan, Mexico, where I've seen some giant golden ants, swam in caves, and even found an army ant queen. But in this episode, everything goes wrong. We'll have to think quickly to make sure that the rest of this amazing trip isn't ruined for good. We, uh, we got kicked out of our very awesome spot in a nature preserve. Uh, to our credit, it did not say that it was private property. It didn't say that there was no camping allowed. Uh, but some guy came up and basically said that it was private property and there was no camping allowed. So, who am I to say? Uh, but now we've kind of just come to the beach to hang out and we made a friend. Isn't she so cute? Gatita. Gatita. Beach cat. <laughs> After a very uneventful day hanging out with a cat on the beach, we got blessed with a small rainstorm, which gave us some hope that the following night would turn up some good stuff for us. Okay, so funny story. Uh, we're driving on the road right now looking for snakes, uh, and I got this window open so I can shine this here flashlight out because uh, our headlights suck. And I'm getting pelted with Solenopsis queens. Like, they're just flying through the window. Uh, it rained today, so it makes sense. Uh, so while, you know, it's a good time for snakes, the ant queens will still be there. So in about an hour, we're probably going to turn around, walk this road, and, uh, and find some Solenopsis queens. Uh, and maybe some other stuff. I think tonight's going to be good for night nighttime activity. So uh, I guess stay tuned for that. But let's hope we find some snakes first. So thankfully, despite it being the middle of the dry season, uh, we did get a tiny little sprinkling of rain. And because Solenopsis are Solenopsis, uh, Geminata flew. Which, hey, I'll take it. There's been a distinct lack of ant queens so far on this trip, so... I like Solenopsis Geminata. I'll take it. As much as I really love these tropical Acromermax, and honestly, they're way cooler than Versicolor. Uh, they do not beat Versicolor in the nest entrance game. I mean, like, y'all, what is this? You call that a nest entrance? Pitiful. While that night may not have been quite as interesting as we were hoping for, with mostly amphibians and a few Solenopsis queens coming out to play, we woke up to a nice sunny morning on the beach and decided to relocate to try and find some new stuff. This man thought it would be a good idea to bring three pairs of socks for an entire trip that's like 10 days. Uh, and he lost one of the pairs of socks. Brother is inventing a new species of foot fungus. Like, it's now, so over. It's, 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 so it's over. never been more over than it is right now. Oh. <laughs> so we've come to a mangrove forest, which is cool. I don't think I've ever been in a mangrove forest before. So far, we're mostly just dealing with a bunch of Azteca. Man, I wish I was looking there. I think you saw a glimpse of a major worker. Um... But yeah, so far just a bunch of Azteca, but mangroves are known to be really good for arboreal ant diversity. So let's hope that we see maybe a little bit more than just these guys. So we've come to a bit of a predicament. The last two days have kind of been filler episodes. Um, and the reason for that is we got kicked out of our awesome jungle nature preserve. So we've kind of just been trying to figure out what to do. There's, I, I showed you briefly that little mangrove place that we were at earlier, but now the road in there is blocked with cones for some reason, um, but we're going to try to get in there at night anyway, because nighttime is good anywhere around here. Uh, and then we've got some ideas for tomorrow, uh, heading a little further south and actually getting into real jungle again, which will hopefully play out as I want it to. Um, but for now, we're just kind of hanging out, and I've been showing you whatever we've found, but it hasn't been a whole lot. But this is what happens when you're exploring. Sometimes things go your way and sometimes things don't. Um, is that how it is? Yeah. We've had a good time up until now. And we still got several days. So as long as we can find another good spot like we did that first day, I think we'll be set. But uh, to be determined, I suppose. Much to our excitement, the mangrove boardwalk reopened right around sunset, which allowed us to get a better look at the place after dark. Check out these Nasuda termes 
open foraging on this uh, this here mangrove stump. As all of you, I'm sure, know, I love Nassut termites, and if Nassut termites aren't quite possibly the best example of that, then I don't know. But they are pretty awesome. Here we've got a Campanotus novogranadensis major. These guys are pretty interesting, and you may notice some, uh, some slight flatness on that face. They are a little bit truncated, but not so dramatically so. Uh, like in other Campanotis, even that I've shown you on this trip. But they're pretty cool. Uh, I did see these in Costa Rica, but it's really nice to see them again. As comparison to the day, these Azteca are going crazy at night. I mean, this is, you know, good amount of worker activity, and it's going all up and down this tree. Is pretty impressive. I mean, this is this is a big reason why I uh, I often call them tropical lyomatopum. If you know lyomatopum, you know this is not anything too special. Well, but it still kind of is. So here's something that I wasn't really expecting. Uh, there's some Tetramorium bicarinatum, which uh, I'm far as far as I'm aware, at least, are typically ground nesting. Uh, but here in this swamp, mangrove swamp, there really isn't anywhere to ground nest. So the logical conclusion is that they must be nesting in some of this wood here, which is pretty interesting, even though they are just, you know, another invasive species. So here's something that was a bit of a surprise to me. Neoponera viosa apparently find their way into the mangroves no problem. Uh, which, I don't know. May, should I be surprised? They are wood nesting after all, so there's plenty of that for them, but uh, yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting it. Pretty cool. Get him, get him! Get him. Oh my god, you got him. Look at him. What is he doing on the beach? Beach gecko, beach gecko. So true. After one final night on a Yucatan beach, we headed inland to a Mayan ruin in the middle of the jungle. So here further inland we have a new species for me, that being Ectotoma ruidi ruidium. Ruidum, can't remember. Um, and while I say this is a new species for me, I'm kind of lying, because we actually have several colonies of these in the lab that I work in, so I deal with these ants all the time. But this is my first time observing them in the wild. So it's cool. Right here we have an Adacephalodes colony. And you'll notice that it's kind of just a series of hills, which is pretty typical for this species. Um, and they're largely inactive right now. Only this little hill in the corner is active. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show that to you. Um, but that's because it's the middle of the day and it's hot. These guys at night will be trailing all over this rainforest. Um, but I'm mostly just happy to see them at all because I was getting worried when we were up by the coast, it was only Acromermax, no Atta. And so I'm glad that now that we're a little bit more inland, we are starting to see the lovely Atta species that the, the neotropical jungle is so well known for. So these, I don't know if you'll be able to see it that well, but these are uncovered ruins. The sun is kind of messing with my camera, but like those rocks are all, you know, put there by people. And I had the bright idea to flip a rock. Uh, and it was a bright idea because underneath is a lovely colony of these awesome Anachetis. A bunch of pupae going on. Of course, the lot of them kind of dispersed. But still, this is a lot cooler than seeing one worker on a tree. At least I certainly think so. Thank you, Mayan ruins. This is this is great. This is out, y'all. Just flipped this uh, decent-sized Solanopsis geminata colony, and her royal highness is right there. That's pretty funny. I really wasn't expecting that. So I guess even if 
even if we didn't get that Geminata flight the other day, we still would have seen at least one Geminata queen. So we had a lot of fun in the ruins. The ruins were really cool. There were cool ants in the ruins. So overall, 10 out of 10. It was worth my like $30 that they charged us to get in. Kind of ridiculous, but I mean, worth it. Uh, now, we're heading to Quintana Roo because we've kind of exhausted all of our options in the state of Yucatan. There really is not anything left here for us uh, in terms of being able to camp without paying an absorbent amount of money. So, uh, we're going to Quintana Roo. Congratulations, this is the Quintana Roo jungle episode. Yay. Uh, so we've got about a two hour drive and I guess you guys will see when we get there. So I know I kind of teased that uh, we were going to be in the jungle. That didn't really work out. Did not exactly go to plan. You can see we are in fact not in the jungle. This is a beach. Check it out. So down here by the coast, the Solenopsis geminata are orange. That's pretty cool. Um, they're also swarming this fly that I gave them. I watched them form a trail over the course of the last probably half hour. I don't know, maybe less than that, but uh, it's cool how their colors vary based on where they are in their range. Oh, look at that, a black crazy ant is trying to trying to steal it from them, but it's a little late at this point, dude. You might have had your chance a little while ago, but there's no way that you're gonna be able to get through all of these Solenopsis. Heck, I'm not even sure I could get through all those Solenopsis. And they're still trailing. Wow, she's not giving up. She really wants that. <laughs> okay, that's a stick. Not really gonna get anywhere with that. This is fun. Watching fire ants do their thing. Ultimately, our final day in Quintana Roo was a relaxing one where we just hung out on the beach and in the water looking for marine wildlife, of which we found some cool stuff. But ultimately, it became time to head back to Cancun where we originally came from and start getting ready to leave. But, of course, the trip wasn't quite over just They're gonna yet. They're going to say when they open up my bag and there's a whole oxy ballast. <laughs> <laughs> so the last couple days of the trip have been pretty uneventful. We are literally leaving. We are driving back to Cancun. And there's a freaking vine snake in the road. Oh my goodness. This is a dream snake for both of us. <laughs> Bro. That is incredible. I am so stoked. Look at the stoked. way it its tongue. I want to get him, I want to see if I can get him opening his mouth again. Dude, we need, we need, both need hard selfies. This is crazy. I, I was I need so not like expecting air. that. Dude. Uh. <laughs> this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's up there, man. That's for sure. I think this might have been the best possible end to this trip. So we've had our fun, but it's time for a little vine snake to go on home. Uh, he really has no problem moving through that. So for one final hurrah before we leave, we are here in a city park in the city of Cancun, and there's some leafcutter ants cutting up this here orange. Oh. I am extremely happy to see this species one more time before leaving. 
Uh, and also, it's a pretty huge major, which I don't think I've recorded yet on this trip, even though we've seen a couple. They're, uh, they're a little hard to film, as you're probably seeing. They're so big and so fast. Uh, so, this is uh, not something that I do very often, but those same little fungus growers as earlier split the whole colony of them. I really wasn't expecting to find fungus at the surface because it's so dry right now. But uh, I think we know from tracking marks in Arizona that they, they tolerate a little bit more drought. I guess even true for the uh, tropical species. Super cool. After a fun last afternoon in a surprisingly well-preserved city park, we headed back to the airport to return our rental car and say goodbye to the great country of Mexico. We probably could have asked for a little bit more exciting of a conclusion to being homeless in Mexico. But this is what happens when you're homeless in Mexico. This guy's flight is at like 8 o'clock in the morning, so he's got to get here. Here is the airport at like 6 at the, at the latest o'clock in the morning, which means we would have had to wake up super early, which means we couldn't camp because we need to be in the city to be close to the airport. So we're not... Well, we're, we're kind of camping. <laughs> we're camping. You know, we've had a little bit nicer looking campsites than this. Oh, this is way better than an ocean view or deep in the jungle. Uh, looking out at the Belize Reef does oh, not compare. You're so right. We're looking at sea bongo. <laughs> we love sea bongo. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is, this is where we're staying tonight. Uh, <laughs> great way to end the trip. This is what happens, all right? Now we're really homeless in Mexico. <laughs> this is the true homeless in Mexico experience. So for the one of you that stuck around to the end, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully this whole series. But if you haven't seen the other two episodes, you can find those on screen right now. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed it all. And uh, yeah. Have a great rest of your day.